Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some of the things that we've already learned and also learning how to calculate uh, energy transferred. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now first I want to show you how to actually use this handout. So in order to complete this you need the energy and calculating energy transferred handout. And when you look at the handout here, um, there's actually four problems that we're looking at. It goes straight across. So this is one problem, here's two, here's three, and here's four. Uh, for this year, uh, what I want you guys to do, I'm going to do number one with you, the first problem, and then you're going to stop. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and this is going to help you answer questions on the homework. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first problem here, uh, it says to draw a food chain. So we have three organisms that we're given, and we need to draw a food chain from these three organisms. So let's go ahead and do that. So looking at them, we know that we have to start with a producer, so we're going to put grass arrow. And then our next one will be deer, because we know that the deer will eat the grass. And then finally, wolf. Okay, uh, So there's our food chain there. Uh, we have our three trophic levels, we have three organisms total, and we're showing that when the deer eats the grass, energy goes to the deer. When the wolf eats the deer, energy goes to the wolf. And that's the whole point of our food chain, of course. Now, all food chains have two additional things that are a part of them, but you do not have to draw them every single time you do a food chain because they're a part of every single food chain. Not every single food chain has grass, deer, or wolf as a part of it, but every food chain has two additional things. So I'm going to draw it right now. You do not have to draw this onto yours. I'm just going to show you what those two additional things are, and then uh, keep that in mind. That because every food chain has these two additional things, we never really have to draw them. But you do have to know that they're there, though. Okay. So the first thing is the sun. Okay. So the sun is a part of just about every single food chain. Um, there are some uh, autotrophs that aren't getting energy directly from the sun. Uh, they get it from chemical energy, remember, so sun wouldn't be a part of that one. But for most part, almost all food chains have the sun as part of it. So it gives energy to the grass here. Another thing that's a part of every single food chain, I'm sure if you stop and thought about it for a moment, you'd figure out what it is, decomposers. So here, when the grass dies, decomposers eat them. I'm just going to put decom. Same thing when the deer dies, and same thing when the wolf dies. So decomposers are part of every single food chain as well. So the stuff that I did in red here, you do not have to draw on all your food chains. You just do the main part that you see in blue because we know that these two things are part of every food chain. They do not have to be drawn in. All right, let's go ahead and answer the questions now. <clears throat> so number one, how many trophic levels in this food chain? So you go over here and you don't have to number. I'm just gonna number for visual purposes. So that's one, there's trophic level two, Here's trophic level three. So there is three trophic levels in this food chain. Number two, how is the produce, what is the producer in this food chain? So food chains always start with your producer. So in this case, we have our grass. Grass is our producer in this food chain. Grass will not always be the main producer because there's tons and tons of other producers, but in this food chain, it is. Number three, what organism is at the second trophic level? So here's the first. Here's the second. So the second trophic level is our deer. Number four, place your food chain into the pyramid on the right. So we have three different levels here. So we have to divide it into three different sections in our pyramid. Now when we place these organisms in, you want to make sure you place them in the right spot. So when you look at a pyramid, here's what I want you to think. The base of the pyramid is probably the most important part. If you build a weak base, the pyramid will basically crumble. So you want something very strong, something that's going to hold up the rest. So here in this case, when we're looking at our food chain, it's going to be our producer. So our producer, which is grass in this case, goes at the base of the pyramid because um, it holds everything else in the food chain up, right? If you think about producers, that's what they do. They're the ones, the only ones that can trap energy from the sun uh, and convert it into a usable form of energy. So they're the strength. They're the very base of the pyramid to hold everything else up. So you put grass and then deer and then wolf. All right, next, 
Uh, we have number five. If the producers start off with 450,000 calories, calculate how much energy the other levels will receive. So what you do is you come over here and you write 450,000 cal. Don't forget your units. Um, always make sure you put your units on your stuff and I'll tell you a story about that in class. So units are very, very important. Make sure you put that on. Um, if you don't put units on the test, you'd be marked off points. So even if you got the numbers right, you'd still lose points if you don't put your units next to it. Alright, now we learn in the notes that from one trophic level to the next, only 10% of the energy is transferred. So only 10% of the energy ever makes it to the next trophic level. So here, you have 450,000. You do not need to take out a calculator to figure this out. There's actually a trick in math that you can use. Whenever you're multiplying a number times 10, and it really makes it really easy when you have the zeros here, you just drop off the last zero. Okay? So 10% of 450,000, if I drop off that last zero, pretend it's not there, that is going to be 45,000 calories. Right? All we did was take off that zero and we got 45,000. Only 10% of 45,000 will make it to the wolf, so we drop off a zero there, so that means 4,500 calories. Okay? Um, so we've actually showed that only 10% gets from one level to the next by calculating like that. All right, so that's it for calculating energy. Um, don't finish up the other ones. We're going to be doing those in class as review and making sure that you understand.